Um, my topic is immunosenescence, which is the aging of our immune system. Is aging of the immune system a treatable disease? As we've already heard, um, immunosenescence is a term which describes the changes in the immune system in elders compared to younger individuals. This includes more infections, a less effective immune response to vaccination, more malignancies, and in addition, the degrees of the immune system is coupled with more chronic inflammation, which is also termed as uh, inflammaging. The disease of the immune system um, is in elderly uh, means that they are more predisposed to severe symptoms from certain infections, such as influenza. About 90% of influenza deaths in the US are among elderly patients. Elderly are more predisposed for a varicella. And I also want to mention COVID-19 since it is a really current topic. And I found a statistic of uh, November 2020. Um, it's from Italy and you can see that the death rate um, here is the 80 plus group and you can see that the most death could be recognized in 80 plus and 90 and older group. On the one hand, there's a recommendation for the vaccination of elderly against pathogens such as influenza, tetanus, or in the future even COVID-19. Then the other hand, on the other hand, the response to vaccination decreases with age. We've heard that before inflammation, it is the red play of the red inflammation and aging and describes clinical syndromes associated with aging, which also includes inflammation. This includes atherosclerosis, insulin resistance, and osteoporosis. Regarding inflammation, levels of interleukin-6 and the C-reactive protein are often elevated in elderly. Inflammation and inflammation underlies the imbalance of pro versus anti-inflammatory cytokines which are released by the cells of our innate immune system. It remains exciting whether or not the adaptive immune system plays a key role as well. And the term senescence, um, it's kind of repetition now. It is not only used in context of humans and the immune system, it is used to describe biological aging, which could also occur in plants. So for example, the discoloration of autumn leaves, but also an organ, organ organism level. So for example, in rice or wheat fields at harvest time. Therefore, it is assumed that immunosenescence in elderly may also be a form of programmed senescence. To understand why the immune system in elderly changes and how the resulting diseases arise, I want to go into detail with the immune system. Yeah, that's also a petition now. We have the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system. The innate immune system comprises myeloid cells, such as macrophages, monocytes, natural killer cells, physical barriers, et cetera. And on the other side, we have the adaptive immune system with T and B lymphocytes. The B and T lymphocytes undergo a specific gene recombination when they're developed. This allows an infinitive repertoire of individual B and T lymphocytes to be developed. And this gene recombination has derived from the YDJ recombination, which stands for variable joining and diversity. I think we also heard this yesterday. And I want to shortly explain this recombination. It is a somatic recombination and occurs only in the maturation of B and T lymphocytes and is therefore the defining process of the adaptive immune system. As already mentioned, it results in a highly diverse repertoire of antibodies, immunoglobulins, and T cell receptors found in B cells and T cells. So explained shortly, it allows a huge repertoire of naive T and B cells to be formed. And naive cell could be kind of translated with antigen inexperienced. Uh, this whole gene recombination step takes place in the primary lymphoid organs, which is the bone marrow for the B cells and the thymus for the T cells. Once a B or T lymphocyte is interacted with an antigen, it could become a long lived memory cell. Most apparent changes in elderly are observed in the T cell compartment, which is responsible for cell mediated immunity. But it could also be um, that uh, you could also see that the T cell compartment um, changes. The thymus and its involution. The thymus involution starts already as an infant and depends on hormonal, hormonal influence. By the age of 70, the thymic epithelial space shrinks to 10% of the total tissue and gets replaced by adipocytes and stroma. Uh, you could also see it here we have a newborn thymus versus a 70 year old 
thymus, and you could see that uh, mostly adipose tissue takes place here. Most of our T cells are long lived cells and therefore produced during childhood. When it comes to naive T cells, which are produced before thymus involution, the biggest change could be observed in elderly. During adulthood, the ratio between naive T cells to mammary T cells is about 50 50, whereas in elderly, most of the existing T cells are long memory T cells. And you, know, you remember a naive uh, cell is converted to a memory cell after binding to the antigen. A new naive T cell can hardly be formed since uh, the thymus function is not the same anymore. Thus, the function to react to a novel antigen decreases in elderly. Moreover, the cytolytic activity of the CD8 plus T cells decreases in elderly, hence leading to poorer responses to pathogens like influenza. Just um, that you remember the CD8 plus T cells are for representing um, the antigens. CD8 plus cells are specific for the cytomegalovirus, so for example, herpes or varicella zoster virus, which could be an explanation for the increasing presence of varicella among elderly. Aging and autoimmune diseases. To understand autoimmune diseases and aging, we have to remember the thymus test, which eliminates any T cells which bind too strongly to self antigen. Only 5% of our produced T cells are kind of passing the thymus test, allowed to exit into the periphery as naive T cells. T cells could also be transformed into the T rex cells, which then to regulatory, and they have a suppressive function and inhibit the immune response of other cell types. So in other words, our thymus is also a preventer of autoimmunity by tolerating self antigen. If age-related inflammatory diseases could be connected with the loss of tolerance to self antigen, is still not researched enough and stays speculative. Some of you maybe remember this picture. It is of Professor Hoffman's lecture, and you can see the thymus test in there. So some T cells are neglected or deleted, and the other ones could exit into the periphery. Uh, immune tolerance could be understood as an unresponsiveness to particular antigen, which depends on an active T cell function. Tolerance includes peripheral as well as central mechanisms. The central mechanisms includes uh, deletion of energy induced by the thymus, and this is the NTREX or the natural TREX, and they are uh, regulating the suppressive function. On the other side, the peripheral mechanism, we have the ITREX, the induced TREX that occur when previously pro-inflammatory cells are converted to an immune suppressive function. t regulatory cells are associated with the presence of the transcription factor FOXOP3. t regulatory cells and age. And t reg cells and the transcription factor FOXOP3 are elevated in elderly. The gene expression of FOXOP3 was even higher in case of tumor patients. You could also see it here in this graphic. Thus, T-Rex may play a significant role in the suppression of specific and non-specific anti-tumor immune response by affecting the function of CD8 plus and natural killer cells. This is why the expression of T-Rex and FOXOP3 mRNA might play an important role as a therapeutic target against malignancies. Furthermore, it is being discussed how IT-Rex and anti-Rex could be used as a further therapeutic target um, against chronic inflammatory diseases transplantation, allergy, or infectious disease. Yeah, I want to kind of summarize the changes in the immune system in elderly. First of all, the thymus tissue shrinks. Um, therefore, we have more memory T cells and less naive T cells, uh, which leads to the reaction to novel antigen and it decreases. We have uh, less CD8 plus T cells and therefore more infections like influenza or varicella. Uh, the Treg and FOXOP3 um, expression is increased, and therefore we have more malignancies. And it is still discussed uh, how the allergies um, are connected with the immune tolerance in elderly. And last but not least, the assumption that that loss of tolerance to self antigens could maybe connected with the increase um, of inflammatory diseases. Yeah, I also found a picture which, which uh, summarizes the changes in elderly quite good. 
and we could see the thymic involution. So um, the tissue shrinks and it gets replaced by adipocytes. Um, we have the T lymphocytes and the pre lymphocytes. The T lymphocytes, like memory T cells, increasing, naive T cell decreases. Inflammation, so we have the higher levels of interleukin 6 and C reactive protein, and the overall changes um, with infection, susceptibility, tumor incidence, etc. Um, as we have heard that the thymus involution plays a big role for our immune system, mm -hmm. uh, it remains the question if we could rejuvenate our adaptive immune system. A lot of researchers had experimented with modifying the rate of thymus involution. It has emerged that sex hormones such as adrenal and gonadal steroids have an inhibitory effect on the thymus, while adrenalectomy or castration results in a hypertrophy in adults' animals. And adrenalectomy is the re removal of the adrenal glands. Furthermore, researchers experimented with hormones which are secreted by the thymus, and those are thymoline, cruelthermone, trolactine, and glucocorticoids. Thymoline has been shown to stimulate the pituitary hormones, the lutein assigning hormone, and adrenocorticotrophic hormone, and in turn, growth hormone stimulates the production of thymoline. Additionally, also leptin has been shown to have an effect on the thymic function. So, um, summarizing, we could say that the neuroendocrine system may also act as a counteraction for immunosenescence. I also want to show you some therapeutic modulations, which were already experimented in the past. Um, for example, patients who are undergoing a sex steroid ablation, ablation therapy for prostate cancer had shown an increase of naive T cells. Another modulation was adults who um, were infected with immunodeficiency virus got a therapeutic administration of the growth hormone, which has shown a beneficial effect on the thymic function. Also, transplantation of thymic tissue has already played a role as a treatment for certain immune deficiencies, and especially also for the DE Church syndrome, which is an defect immunopathy with defected T cells. Yeah, to come to an end to my presentation, I, presentation, I come up with some questions. Um, how long will it take until vaccination is as useful for elderly as for adults? Are we going to take medication which will rejuvenate our immune system in the future? And is aging of the immune system a treatable disease? Of course, these questions have to consider the principles of evolutionary medicine as well as ethical principles. In order to understand immunosenescence, further attention needs to be devoted to the physiological roles of the thymus at various ages. Yeah, thanks for your attention, and maybe I could leave these questions open for a uh, discussion later.